Okay, I'll be sharing you about the principle of ECR, the Selective Catalytic, uh, catalytic uh, Reduction. One of my subscribers requested me to make a video about ECR. Shout out to Captain Campos! Okay, I'll be sharing you about the principle of ECR, the Selective Catalytic, uh, catalytic uh, Reduction. Just like the EGR, ECR is also part of the NOx TRT technologies, and this is to reduce the emission of NOx into atmosphere. NOx pollution occurs when nitrogen oxide are released as a gas into the atmosphere during high temperature combustion of fossil fuel. NOx or the nitrogen oxide form when oxygen and nitrogen from the air interact during a high temperature combustion event. The condition occurs in the internal combustion engine. An ECR system is one of the devices that reduces the NOx. There are two types of ECR, which is the high-pressure ECR and the low-pressure ECR. The low-pressure ECR is usually installed after the turbine, while the high-pressure ECR is installed before the turbine. But in this video, I'll be sharing about the high-pressure ECR of Hitachi. In principle, uh, Michui and Hitachi ECR are the same, but design and com construction is quite different. So before we get into the operation, let's first start with the working principle of ECR. The ECR system is a device that reduces the NOx by chemical reaction on the ECR catalyst. And the high-pressure ECR shall consist of the following. The reactor, the vaporizer, the emission reduction control system, or ERCS, the ECR operation panel, reducing agent dosing system, ECR control butterfly bulbs, venting system, and standby heat system. The high pressure ECR system consists of two major components, such as the vaporizer in the reactor. The reactor is a cylindrical housing so as designed to get uniform gas flow. And inside the reactor, it has a three layer of catalyst and its size is selected for the NOx requirement according to the amount of gas and sulfur content of fuel. While the vaporizer is also a cylindrical housing, so it's so designed to get a uniform flow also. And the urea is being injected in the vaporizer. The vaporizer is to have the function for vaporization of urea, hydrolysis of urea, and proper mixing of excess gas and converted into ammonia. During the tier 2 mode, when we said tier 2, this is uh, engine is running without ECR. Okay. During this mode, the ECR system is cut off from the engine by closing both reactor ceiling valve or RSV and reactor throttle valve or RTV. A tier 2 mode, the reactor bypass valve or RVB is open and excess gas passes directly to the turbocharger. When ECR system is engaged or tier 3 mode, RSV and RTV are open and RVV is closed. Even though the reactor is placed before the turbocharger, the excess gas temperature will still be low at low load. But to increase the excess gas temperature to the required level for running the ECR, a cylinder bypass from its cabin's air receiver to the turbine inlet is installed and called as a cylinder bypass valve or CVB. Part of the scavenging air bypasses the engine cylinder and flows to the turbine. Since the air supplied to the cylinder decreases, the gas temperature at the engine outlet increases. The reactor unit is fitted with soot blower. This is to clean the catalyst during ECR operation. The soot blowing air is branched off from the engine starting air system. Air to each soot blow pipe is supplied periodically and sequentially. The ECR is also fitted with a standby heat system, which should be activated before running the ECR. The standby heat system is to maintain the temperature of the reactor higher than the dew point to prevent the low temperature corrosion. The electrical cable is installed outer the surface of the reactor. It also consists the standby heater control panel. The standby heat system is auto-run when in echo port, 
while manually start 24 hours prior entering ECA. The ECR is also fitted with venting system, such as the quick venting mode and the normal venting mode. When after switching tier 3 to tier 2, quick venting mode is operated to purge out remaining excess gas inside the ECR line. In this mode, the vent air is supplied from urea injection nozzle and a soot blower pipings, meaning to say in the vaporizer and in the reactor. After finishing the quick venting mode, normal venting mode is started. The air is supplied from the soot blower purge air line and the excess air seals the valve set of RSB or RTV, similar in principle with the sealing air of EGCS or the scrubber. According to Maker, it's too difficult to fully close the RSV and RTV. Reason, it has the venting air to prevent the excess gas to enter the vaporizer and reactor unit when ECR is not running. Venting air is higher than the excess gas side and it operates all the time outside the ECA. The excess gas in the ECR system is completely replaced with air. And now the question is, how does ECR reduce NOx? Okay. The NOx reduce catalytically to nitrogen and water by adding ammonia as a reducing agent. The applicable reducing agent for high-pressure ECR is urea. The catalytic technology reduces the NOx of the excess gases from the engine. The urea solution will be injected into vaporizer with the help of atomizing air. With the high temperature excess gases passing through the vaporizer, the urea decomposes to ammonia as become the reducing agent. Inside the vaporizer, the excess gas in the ammonia will be mixed through the mixer, then will lead to the reactor unit. The ECR catalyst efficiently facilitates ammonia and NOx reaction. In NOx is decomposed into nitrogen and water vapor. This high-pressure ECR of Hitachi is designed for HFO or high sulfur fuel oil. On my next video, I'll be sharing the ECR operation. Thank you for watching Chibayet. I hope you have learned again. And if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. For more technical videos, just visit my YouTube channel, Chip Boyet. Again, good day and God bless us all.